I want to jump back into using the Kerberos uh, for one of, its uh, one of its primary functions, which is uh, direction finding. Uh, you'll have to watch one of my earlier videos to go through uh, and get set up with RDF Mapper and uh, also uh, read a little more about how to use the RDF Mapper uh, script that RTLSDR, uh, the blog or the .com site has put together, which is essentially for stationary um, direction finding nodes to be able to send their information off to RDF Mapper. I go into detail on how to set that up in an earlier video. So I'm going to pick back up, but what I'm going to include this time, uh, I was actually able to uh, grab my Raspberry Pi and so and a second Kerberos. So now I want to show multiple units uh, feeding into RDF Mapper. So we're, we're going to jump right in here. Um, I already have a lot of things in place. You can see on my desktop there, I've uh, made the RDF Mapper script executable. This will kick off the server, which is running on this uh, instance of Dragon OS. Um, I've also went ahead and replaced the uh, RTL SDR drivers so that uh, because I don't have two Raspberry Pis, this, this is not only going to run the server, it's also going to run an instance of the Kerberos software uh, as well. So this, uh, sorry, this actually sets up the, the web page portion and REF mapper. Next, we'll go into the RDF uh, mapper bearing server. And let me see here, in a previous video, like I said, I showed what's needed to uh, essentially spin up a, a PHP web server. And uh, this command here will look familiar. We'll go into this directory. We've already uh, made the data folder, um, uh, 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 I think, Chamod 777. Um, so we'll spin up what's here in a web server on the IP address of this uh, laptop, which is 3.100 on port 80. So now we can push that to the background that's running. We also need to start the Kerberos software. Okay, so while that's running, we'll, come, we'll jump over here. We need to change the bearing server to the IP address of 3.100. Okay, we got the Kerberos software. Uh, I am not going to spend a lot of time setting up the, you know, syncing the radios. All that is covered on the Kerberos SDR uh, quick start guide. Goes really in depth how to set this up properly. I'm just focused on getting the networking piece going. So we can see uh, I have circular antenna arrays set up. Each node's about, I don't know, 15 feet apart. Uh, you can see how fast this performs actually on the, the laptop. The Pi that I have is actually, it's not even a B plus, so it's gonna be a little slow. I recommend a B plus or a, a Pi 4. So let's see. Uh, another thing we need to get going. Let's see, we got this bearing server and this going. Let's open one more window. And let's see. This is um, actually what I had downloaded the, the script. And if you recall, I edited the .env file. I put the DOA server, which is the IP address, it just happens to be the same as what the server is running on. That's where the values are going to be where the script is going to grab the values from and then send it off to the RDF server, which of course is in this case, the same machine station ID station one Latin longs default. So Python three RDF mapper, and you're going to see, uh, Let's see right now, so there's no 
there's no information being received because we don't have the DOA turned on. So let's come here. We'll turn on DOA. Now we can see it's uh, pulling the information it needs and sending it off to the server. It's in the background. Now I come here, I add station one. I give it a minute. It pulls the, I think it updates every five seconds and you can change that uh, in the .env file and then here on the page. So there is my one Kerberos in the lobs, uh, the DOA information that it's generating. Okay. Now, I suspect most people have this set up on the Raspberry Pi, and RTLSDR.com uh, puts out an image. I think the latest one is 1.6.1, uh, has all the software in it. So let me switch over to the Raspberry Pi. This is the stock uh, Raspberry Pi image. Uh, the software on it, if you were to um, connect in with real VNC, it, uh, it already has that on there so you can get this up and running. Now the one change I did make, you can see up here, it's uh, wirelessly connected to the same network that the RDF mapper server is on. Uh, there is a different IP address, that's just because I have the network split, but, but it essentially is the same network. And how I made that change was, uh, you know, it, by default, if you set up the Raspberry Pi and the Kerb with the Kerberos uh, image, um, it will it will come online and be looking for a default SSID and uh, a password that it will connect to. Purpose of that is to typically use the Android phone and app, set up a hotspot. The uh, Raspberry Pi wirelessly connects to it, and that's how uh, the Kerberos and, and all the software talks. Um, what you can also do is go into your um, let me see. You can come in here and you can edit that WPA underscore supplicant dot com file. Now I'm not going to open it up because it's got my SSID and password in it, but it's if you open that with an editor, you look, it's going to give you an example. Uh, you can change that example. So that way when the Raspberry Pi uh, boots up, it's looking for that secondary network to connect to, and that's what I took advantage of. Uh, if you run into an issue where you can't um, get in there, you, if you leave the Pi running long enough without the SSID available to it, it will in turn set itself up as a hotspot, and that information is on the Kerberos Quick Start Guide. You can then connect to the Raspberry Pi and use the default information they give you to come in and make any edits uh, that you need to do. So let me see. So the one edit uh, I did make is uh, pull down the uh, Python uh, scripts that RDF, or I'm sorry, RTL SDR has put together. Same thing you saw me do in the laptop. I downloaded it. Uh, you follow the directions here, pip3 install requirements. So for instance, uh, I downloaded it straight from the website. I did just like it says there, sudo pip3 install uh, requirements. It put everything in place. I came here, I edited the sorry, the dot, it's a hidden file dot uh, env. You can see in this case though, uh, the DOA server, I put the IP address of the Pi with the RDF server being the IP address of the external server, change station uh, ID to station two, and just change the longitude just a little bit so we can see the difference here. Okay, so once you have all that in place, uh, minimize this for a second we'll come back we'll set up uh, we'll set up the pie just to get this going okay let's see it's 
processing okay I'm gonna turn off the spectrum display to save some uh, some of the processing power here okay we're back processing we've got the direction of arrival running so last but not least we need to kick off the RDF uh, mapper script here okay and because we have DOA running and being generated we've got that information that's needed now let's hop back over to our server come here let's add the uh, second ID the station 2 give it a second here now we have both our uh, Kerberos units reporting to RDF mapper now had I take a more time to really fine-tune obviously the uh, antenna array uh, and all the steps that uh, RTL the quick start guy gives you um, it's likely I would have been getting uh, these two units uh, pointing at the, the the signal that I'm focused on and then I should be getting intersections now you know add in a third device you know say down here if you were looking for a signal um, in the center then you would uh, be having all three units uh, shooting the lines of bearing uh, there uh, one thing I'd love to see you know if RDF mapper were to add is uh, and maybe this is a, an option somewhere but for these uh, lobs to be saved for a certain amount of time and and then you know maybe they drop off as new ones uh, come around uh, let's see one additional thing so that, that if you took the time uh, to set this all up you might be able to further refine this if you come to 8080 or sorry 8081 compass you'll notice down here they've added a minimum power and minimum confidence so let's say for example I only wanted uh, information uh, if it uh, uh, jumped up above 24 so this is just uh, let's see so now let's see station one okay so now you're only going to get the lobs thrown on here if it goes over uh, that threshold so that could further help you uh, narrow down uh, and throw out erroneous uh, readings what you really want to do though is uh, get the the pi and the android app and all that working together and now the Android app has the ability to put the uh, RDF mapper bearing server information so that uh, if you had this out in the cloud somewhere you've got moving devices uh, uh, taking advantage of the Android app you know with the GPS the averaging all that information would be thrown on here and would probably make it uh, far more accurate uh, and uh, usable uh, especially uh, being that a lot of it would just be automated uh, you know icons moving with GPS uh, the lobs being thrown here would have um, you know some averaging done to it and uh, so on and so forth so if you have any questions just ask uh, ask away in the uh, you know in the on, on the bottom of the YouTube page there and I'll try and address it I didn't want to spend too much time setting them up because I cover that in an earlier video this is just showing how to quickly uh, add in the Raspberry Pi and the Kerberos setup and multiple nodes uh, for direction finding. Okay.